Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Well, let's lift our hands to the Most High God and bless His holy name. Let's give Him glory. Let's give Him honor. Let's give Him adoration. Let Him hear your voice. Tell Him you love Him. Tell Him you appreciate Him. Give Him glory. Give Him honor. Give Him adoration. Bless the King of Kings. Bless the Lord of Lords. Bless the ancient of days. Give him glory, give him honor. Praise him. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be adored. He's worthy to be magnified. Praise him. There's no one like him. Give him all glory, give him all honor. Give him all adoration. Bless, bless, bless the name of the Lord. Give him glory, give him honor, give him adoration. Magnify him. Magnify the King of glory. Worship him. Worship him. Worship him. Worship him. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we worship. Amen. I want you to lift your voice to him loud and clear and say, Father, Father. if you are touching two people here today, please let me be one of them. Go ahead, talk to the Almighty God. If your fire is going to touch two people here today, Almighty God, please let me be one of them. Please let me be one of them. Let him hear your voice. Tell him. If you are touching only two people here today, Lord, Kindly let me be one of them. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. What a Mighty God, we say, Hallelujah. Heaven and earth adore, even angels bow before Him. What a mighty God, we say, What a mighty God. We say Hallelujah. 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 What a mighty God. We are serving him. Hallelujah. Almighty God, the Most High, the consuming fire, 
the Holy One of Israel, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the unchangeable changer, wonderful, counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, Alpha, Omega, the beginning, the ending, the one who was, the one who is, the one who is to come, the Almighty. Glory be to your holy name. Tonight, in the life of every one of your children, those who are here and those who are watching all over the world, Father, do something new. Let your fire fall. Save souls today. Heal today. Set the captives free. What you alone can do, do in our midst. Put a new song in our mouth. Let every one of us live here singing a new song. And please, Lord God Almighty, heal this land. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Well, let someone shout hallelujah. <laughs> and shake hands with two or three people and prophesy to them it will be well with you tonight. And then you may please be seated. Let's put our hands together to the Almighty God for the wonderful choir here. They've done a great job. And thank God for all those who had ministered in music tonight. They all did excellently well. So let's give the Lord another round of applause for all of them. Amen. Is there anyone here who is attending a Festival of Life program for the first time? Uh, let me see your hand if you are attending for the first time. Oh, okay. Well, you will get a first time miracle in Jesus' name. Just in the next one hour, I believe the Almighty God is going to do something special. I just want to let you know that from time to time, I will be calling on you to stand up and pray. And when I ask you to pray, I want you to pray like warriors. Don't pray like ladies and gentlemen tonight. Uh, after tonight, if you want, you can become ladies and gentlemen again. And I want you to pray like we pray in Africa. I want you to pray it so that the ground will shake. I want you to pray the fire down, because fire will fall here tonight. Now, when I ask you to stand to pray, I'm only asking the young ones to stand. The old ones can sit down and do their own praying seated. When you say, what happens if they fall asleep? That's no problem. The Bible says old men will dream dreams. <laughs> and they need to fall asleep first before they can dream. Now, so anyone who is older than I is old. If you are younger than I, you are young. I'm 77, so all the young people in the house shout hallelujah. The Bible may declare that everyone who got a miracle 
through the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ, got it by faith. <clears throat> he will ask you, do you believe I can do this? If you say, I believe, he said, then be it unto you according to your faith. Or he may say, your faith has made thee whole. I can assure you that the Almighty God is here tonight. How do I know? He says, where two or three are gathered together in my name, I'll be there. Now, we are more than two or three here tonight. So God is here. Yeah. The question is, when exactly do you want your miracle? Yeah. Be it unto you according to yeah. faith. Let me jump the rest of the introduction because of uh, time and go to Exodus chapter 3. I will be reading from verse 1 to 10. Exodus 3, from verse 1 to 10. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burned. And somebody will see something new tonight. Yeah. And when the Lord saw that, he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Draw not near hither. Put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people, which are in Egypt, and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. And I'm come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land unto a good land and a large, unto a land flowing with milk and honey, unto the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. Now therefore behold, the cry of the children of Israel is come unto me, and I've also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppressed them. Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. I wish I have the whole night to explain to you what happens whenever the fire of God falls. I mean, from this story, we see the first time that the fire of God fell for Moses. He saw something new, and like I've prayed, somebody will see something new tonight. <laughs> Not only did he see something new, he had God for the first time. And there's someone here today who will hear God. Yeah. He didn't just hear God. God called him by name. And whenever God calls a man by name, something dramatic is about to happen. When he calls Samuel by name, a small boy became a prophet. When he calls you by name tonight, your life will never be the same again. Yeah. I can go on and on and on, but I just want to mention just a few of the things that God himself said. 
things that will be abundantly clear when the fire of God falls. The first thing is God said, I have seen. I have seen. Now you wonder, how can God say, I have seen? He said, I've, I've seen the sufferings of my people. God wasn't blind, but he said, I have seen. In Psalm 94, verse 9, Psalm 94, verse 9, the Bible says, He that formed the eyes, will he not see? But when we talk about seeing, to see has many meanings. For example, if somebody had been trying to explain something to you, and all of a sudden you understand what is being said, you will say, I see. It doesn't mean you have been blind. It means my eye of understanding has been opened. If somebody walks to me now and says, Daddy, please, after this meeting, I will want to see you. He's already looking at me. But I want to see you means I will need special attention. I believe somebody will see God tonight. So when God says, I have seen, he's simply saying, I am focusing on someone. And tonight, God is going to focus on somebody here tonight. For instance, you can see in John chapter 9, from verse 1 to 7. John 9, 1 to 7. The Bible talks about a man who was born blind. And the Bible said, Jesus saw the man. As you read the story further, and as I will give you other examples, you will understand that whenever God sees somebody, the life of that person will never be the same again. He saw that blind man. By the end of the day, the blind man was no longer blind because Jesus saw him. And usually when God sees someone, it means he's focusing on a particular person, even in a crowd. For example, in John chapter 5, from verse 2 to 9, John 5, from verse 2 to 9. The Bible tells us that there was a pool at a place called Bethesda. And there was a multitude of people there. All manners of sick people. Hopeless cases. Cases that doctors have written of. They all stayed by that pool. Because the Bible says once a year, an angel will come down and trouble the waters. And the first fellow to step in after the angel has troubled the water will be healed. Doesn't matter how long he has been sick. Jesus came there and saw a man. A man who has been there for 38 years. He was the only one he saw. So you understand it's not physical scene we are talking about now. He was the only one he focused on. And because he focused on that particular person, by the end of the story, that fellow was no longer sick. He was moved to a new level. Tonight, the Almighty God is about to see someone. I don't know who that someone is, but his amen will be louder than that of anyone else. Because when he sees you, everything will change. I will share a testimony with you before you pray your first prayer. Some of you have had the testimony of the man before. 
he was lame. And he heard that miracles were happening at a place we call Redemption Camp. And he got his friends to please bring him there. And the friends had to carry him. But when they got to the campground, and there was a crowd, maybe a little more than the crowd here, and so much so that there wasn't ease of movement, even for those people who were trekking. The friends said, we have brought you thus far. We want to go forward. We can't carry you through this multitude. So they dropped him. As they dropped him, he spoke to God. He said, oh Lord, they have dropped me here. I hope you have seen me here. And immediately, God related the message to me as I was preaching and said, there is someone in the crowd who said, oh God, you have seen me here. And God said, tell him, I have seen you. The moment he heard that, he said, ah, you mean God has seen me? And suddenly something began to happen. Strength came to his legs. He suddenly found that he could stand. Nobody prayed for him, but God saw him. After the program, his friends came back looking for him. They looked at where they dropped him. No one was there. And they were looking around. He tapped them from behind. He said, are you looking for me? Stand on your feet and cry to the Almighty God and say, Father, Please see me, see me, see me tonight. See me tonight. Almighty God, focus on me tonight. Focus on me tonight. Please, Lord, focus on me tonight. Oh, Lord God Almighty, I know we are many here, but please see me, see me tonight. Focus on me tonight. Focus on me tonight. Focus on me tonight. Focus on me tonight. Oh, yes, Lord, focus on me. See me tonight. See me tonight. I know we are many here, but in this crowd, Lord, focus on me. See me tonight. Uh, if you can see me tonight, I know everything will change. Daddy, please see me tonight. See me tonight, Lord. Almighty God, please see me tonight. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Please be seated. And the second thing that God said that day when the fire fell for Moses, he said, I have heard. I've seen the suffering of my people. I have heard their cry. Does it mean that God was deaf before? No. The Bible says in the same Psalm 94 verse 9, Psalm 94 verse 9, he said, He that planted the ears, will he not hear? God said, I have heard. So you know he's talking about specific hearing. There could be a crowd. Everybody praying, crying to God. And God can hear someone specifically. The Bible says, it's according to Psalm 65 verse 2, Psalm 65 verse 2, he said, O thou that heareth prayers, unto thee shall all flesh come. So he hears 
There's no doubt about that, that he hears. The Bible says in Isaiah 55 verse 6, Isaiah 55 verse 6, that if you want him to hear you, you must call on him while he is near. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. But when God's fire falls, because when the fire falls, it means God is present. It means then God is near. And when God is near, he hears. And when he hears, he will answer. In Mark chapter 10, from verse 46 to 52, Mark 10, 46 to 52, you, you know the story of a man called Bartimaeus. The Bible said Jesus was passing by, and this man was by the wayside begging. And there was a lot of people. But there was one man who was crying in the crowd. And as he was crying, there were people trying to shut him up. But God still heard. You see, he, I've asked you to pray. You, you prayed, you tried. But tonight you are going to pray the kind of prayer that the people around you may even want to say, shut up. And you tell them, oh, you can shut up. You don't need a miracle. I need one. Is anybody here tonight in need of a miracle? Will you shout hallelujah loud and clear? <laughs> when this man called, God heard. And when he heard, he waited. The Bible says Jesus stood still. When God hears you, he will suspend everything he's doing until he has attended to your case. I believe that God sent me to Dublin this particular time for one person. And God is going to hear that person today. He promised he said in Jeremiah 33, verse 3, Jeremiah 33, verse 3, he said, If you call on me, I will answer you, and I will show you great and mighty things. When you call, he hears. When he hears, he answers. And things will never be the same again. It was the story of this young man. We've just finished a program. Can't remember which one. And of course, there was a multitude there. I have just ministered for a long period of time. And as a human being, physically, I was tired. And I wanted to go home to rest. So there have been all, uh, all kinds of security people around to make sure nobody would disturb me. So I got into my car and I was driving away. I heard somebody crying. And you could feel it even in your bones that this man is not crying an ordinary cry. But I knew if I stopped, I would be in trouble. Because if I just stop there, there are so many people, like I tell my friends, the bodyguards are protecting me from my friends, not from my enemies. They, they, because so many people want to come and say, just let me touch it. So I said, I won't stop. But I told my driver, as soon as you can get me to a place of safety, you can come back and bring that fellow. Someone is crying for help. So he took me to my house and came back. And of course, he was still there. Still crying. Daddy, help me. Daddy, help me. So he brought him. Sir, what is your problem? He said, sir, I have graduated six years ago. I have no job. My wife who had been supporting the family, lost her job. 
Now we have a set of truants. We have not eaten for three days. Ah. I said, first of all, before we go further, let's give you food. We gave him food, gave the wife and the twins food. They were eating right there by my gate. And then we listened to their the story. I found out where they came from. And before the end of the day, by the grace of God, there was a job for both the husband and for the wife. I want you to stand on your feet. Lift your voice to the Almighty God. Don't pray like ladies and gentlemen. I say, Father, hear me tonight. Go and cry to him. Hear me, hear me, hear me tonight. Oh, Almighty God, hear me tonight. Hear me tonight, please hear me tonight. Hear me tonight. Hear me tonight and answer me by fire. Hear me tonight. Almighty God, hear me, hear me, hear me tonight. Please hear me, hear me tonight. Almighty God, hear me tonight, hear me tonight, hear me tonight. Almighty God, hear me tonight, hear me tonight. I need your help, hear, hear me tonight, hear me, Almighty God. I know we are many here, but please hear me, hear me, hear me. Hear me, almighty God. Hear me tonight. Hear me tonight. Hear me tonight, Lord. I need your help. Please, daddy, help me. Hear me tonight. Hear me tonight. Hear me tonight. Please, Lord, hear me. Hear me. Hear me tonight. Out of your great mercy, hear me tonight. Please, Lord, hear me tonight. King of glory, hear me tonight. Ancient of this, hear me tonight. You are the helper of the helpless. Hear me tonight. Hear me tonight. Hear me tonight. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord, hear me tonight. Hear me tonight. Please hear me tonight. Let a fire fall for me tonight, Lord. Hear me tonight. Hear me tonight. Hear me tonight. Hear me once again, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. That's very good. You, 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 you are doing well now. The third thing that God said to Moses, he said, I, I've seen the suffering of my people. I've heard their cry. And then he said, I know their sorrows. He sees, he hears, and he knows. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 28, Isaiah 40, verse 28, he said, you, you can't even such is understanding. He, 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 the kind of things he knows is amazing. God is all-knowing. All-knowing. I've always said that when I'm talking to people who are not academicians, 
And I said, I have PhD in mathematics. They would look at me as if, hey, this man knows all mathematics. That's a joke. If I'm among mathematicians, and I say, I have PhD in mathematics, they will ask me, what aspect of mathematics? And I will say, applied mass. I say, what aspect of applied mass? And I say, well, fluid dynamics. I say, uh, which aspect of fluid dynamics? And I say, well, hydrodynamics. Okay, which aspect of hydrodynamics? And I say, three-dimensional motion. Ah, okay. And which aspect of three-dimensional motion? <laughs> and I say, well, uh, Navier-Stokes equation. By the time they pin me down, on what I got the PhD on, it will be like the pinhead. It will take you a thousand years or more to know all there is to know in mathematics. But God knows all mathematics, all physics, all chemistry, all subjects known and yet unknown. So he knows all things. So what does he mean by saying I know. He's talking about specific knowing. You know, there are occasions when you have problems that you cannot even discuss with anyone. Whenever we come forward to share testimonies, particularly testimony about salvation, we only tell this part of the story that is easy to tell. There are things you can't even tell your pastor. Things you know that if you tell the pastor the next time he sees you, <laughs> he may want to run. There are things pastor can never tell the congregation. But God knows. The Bible says in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 15, verse 18, Acts 15, verse 18, it says, Known unto God are uh, all his works from the foundation of the world. He knew you even before he formed you. When you were still in your mother's womb, he already knew you. The Bible says in Mark chapter 2 from verse 1 to 12, Mark 2 from verse 1 to 12, he said when they, when they brought that boy who was paralyzed, uh, who had palsy, when they brought him through the roof and Jesus saw their faith, and began to say, oh, son, thy sins are forgiven thee. And the people were thinking. They didn't say a word. But they were thinking, who is this man that is blaspheming? The Bible said he knew their thoughts. He even knows your thoughts. And then, when he knows your problems, you can be sure he has a solution. It's the Bible says, for example, in Mark chapter 1, from verse 23 to 27, Mark 1, 23 to 27, the Bible said there was a man in the temple with an unclean spirit. He was in the church. He was well-dressed. But a demon was inside him. If God were to show you what's, what's inside the beautiful clothes that people are wearing, many of you will relocate. But God knows. And those problems that have been troubling you that you cannot discuss with anyone, God is here tonight to solve them all. I will remind you of a story, of a testimony. And I think I saw somebody who was there that night, here today. We had a program, a Holy Ghost service at a stadium in Ibadan. The place was packed, inside the stadium, outside the stadium, a lot of people. We had a wonderful, wonderful service. I was about to finish. When all of a sudden God spoke to me, I said, there is a woman here 
under her armpit instead of hair there are feathers and she had been living with this trouble since she was young every night before going to bed she would go to the toilet pluck out the feathers so that the husband would not see them by the following morning the feathers are back and God said, if the fellow will come forward, he will set her free. When I heard God saying that, I said to him, Daddy, we have had a wonderful time. <laughs> Let's go home now. I know if you say there is someone with feathers under her armpits, I know you are speaking the truth. But who is going to come forward? with all the cameras in this crowd. And if nobody comes forward, hey, daddy, they will call me a liar. Let's go home. And God said to me, son, you want her to die with her problem? I said, no, I make the announcement. So I announced and suddenly a woman began to come forward. Well dressed. If you could see straight away, this is someone highly educated. <laughs> when she came forward, I repeated, maybe you didn't hear what I said. She said, I heard. But before we finished that night, she went to the toilet to check and the feathers were gone. Stand on your feet. Lift your voice to the Almighty God and say, Father, you know all my problems. Please solve them all. Lift your voice to Him. Cry unto Him. You know all my problems. You know them. You know them. Problems I can't share with anybody. Problems I can't discuss with my prayer partner. You know them. Please solve them all. You know them all. You know them all. Please, Lord, solve all my problems. Please solve all my problems. Oh, yes, Lord. Please solve all my problems. You know them. You know, you know problems I can't discuss with my husband. You know problems I can't discuss with my wife. You know the problems I can't discuss with my pastor. Father, you know them all. You know, you know, you know. Please help me solve these problems. You know where my headache lies. Please, Lord, help me solve all my problems. Solve all my problems. Solve all my problems. Oh, please, solve all my problems. Solve all my problems. Please solve all my problems. You know them all. Thank you, Father. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Please be seated. And then the fourth thing. Thank you, Father. The Lord said, there's someone here tonight. He said, I have heard your cry. And I will heal you. Thank you, Father. Ah, 
Amen. Maybe I will say amen to this one too. Allah says, just to show you that I'm the helper of the helpless, I will send help to you. <laughs> oh my. Thank you, Lord. The Lord said, there's someone here tonight. He said, I want you to know now from tonight onward, barrenness will no longer be mentioned in your family. Now, what is the fourth thing? When God began to tell Moses, I'm the God of Abraham, I'm the God of Isaac, I'm the God of Jacob, he was saying, I remember. I remember my covenant. Because when you read Exodus chapter 2 from verse 23 to 25, Exodus 2, 23 to 25, just before the fire fell, the Bible said, God remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, with Jacob. When God remembers someone, dramatic things begin to happen. In Genesis chapter 8, if you read the old chapter, Genesis chapter 8, the old chapter, the Bible said, God remember Noah. And the day he remembered Noah, Noah came out of hiding. The day he remembered Noah, everything changed for that family. In Genesis chapter 30 from verse 22 to 24, Genesis 30 verse 22 to 24, the Bible says, God remember Rachel and open her womb. When God remembers the barren, the barren becomes fruitful. When he remembers someone who has been hidden, suddenly he comes to the light. When he remembers someone that seemed to be forgotten, Someone you think can never marry. Suddenly, marriage, wedding bells will begin to ring. Because he remembered. When he remembered Colinius in Acts chapter 10, you can read the whole chapter, Acts chapter 10. When he remembered Colinius, he brought salvation to his whole household in one day. I pray God will remember somebody today. Now, when he remembers, suddenly he decided, I better do something about it. When he remembers you, he destroys every curse that may be in your family. Yeah. When he remembers you, he destroys every bondage Amen. that your family may be in. Yeah. Because he said, I remember my covenant. It is time now to tell all those forces holding my people down and say to them, let my people go so that they can serve me. Yeah. <sighs> I'm trying to think of one good example to give you. There are several of them. There was this lady that came to us. Some of you have heard the story before. 33 years old. And said, I've come for prayers. What's the problem? I said, it's a problem I find it difficult to tell anyone. I said, well, you're already here. Might as well tell me, he said, at the age of 33, I'm still bedwetting. I said, that's no problem. We'll pray a simple prayer. If something is wrong with your bladder, God will fix it. Give you a new bladder if need be. I said, no, before you pray. 
He said, my mother before me was a bedwetter. Oh, my grandmother, bedwetter. All my sisters, bedwetter. My daughters, bedwetter. Ah, then I know <laughs> it's a family problem. I knew there was a curse in the family. But glory be to God, there is someone who can cancel every curse. I told her to give her life to Jesus Christ and I didn't have to preach long. She surrendered her life to Jesus. We prayed a simple prayer. And God remembered the family. The following day she came back rejoicing. Saying for the first time in 33 years she woke up and the bed was dry. She went and brought her sisters. They all gave their life to Jesus Christ and they stopped bedwetting. If only God can remember somebody today, even the problems that have been age long in your family will come to an end. Yeah. Will you kindly stand on your feet and cry to him and say, Father, please remember me. Please remember me. Remember me. Remember me tonight. Almighty God, remember me. Remember me, bring salvation to my family. Remember me, destroy every curse, every yoke in my family. Lord, please remember me. Remember me too. Remember me. Lord, please remember me. Please remember me, oh Lord. Oh, Almighty God, please remember me. Remember me, oh Lord, remember me too. You've done mighty things for others. Please remember me too. Remember me. Remember me, Lord. Please remember me. Please remember me. Remember me, Lord. Remember me. Remember me too. Uh, you've done great things. I've had testimonies. Lord, please remember me. Remember me, Lord. Remember me, oh Lord. Please remember me. Thank you, Father. Remember me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you forevermore. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And so shall it be in Jesus' name. Please be seated. You're doing very fine. We are almost there. And then number five. He said, not only have I seen, not only have I heard, not only do I know, not only do I remember my covenant, I am here yeah. to deliver. Yeah. Ah, that's the sweetest of them all. He said, I'm ready to act now. Yeah. You know, God has a timetable for everything. Yeah. Uh, the Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1. Ecclesiastes 3, verse 1. Thank you, Father. Daddy says, his healing virtue is falling like rain. Yeah. Thank you. I rejoice with this particular fellow. The Lord said they have referred to you as an abandoned project. He asked me to tell you I will surprise them. In 
in Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1, the Bible said that God has a season for every, everything and there is a time for every purpose. God has a timetable. But the Bible also tells us that God will arise and have mercy on Zion. Why? For the time to favor her, yet the set time has come. I am convinced beyond all doubt that the time has come for a particular person. For God to act. He said, I've seen, I've heard, I know, I remember, and I am here to deliver. And when God says, I am ready to help, I'm ready to deliver, who can stop it? Isaiah 43, verse 13. Isaiah 43, verse 13 says, I will walk. Who can hinder me? Revelation chapter 3, verse 7 to 8. Revelation 3, verse 7 to 8 says, He has the key of David. When he opens, no man can shut. When he shuts, no man can open. I believe God for someone here today that your heavens are about to open. Yeah. Let the enemy do what they like. The moment God is ready, he will silence the enemy. Yeah. Do you know when you read false Samuel chapter 17. You can read it from verse 16 to 51. 4 Samuel 17, 16 to 51. For 40 days, Goliath terrorized a whole nation. 40 days. But when God was ready, he sent a small boy to put an end to all that the enemy had been doing. It doesn't matter how long your problem had been, the moment he is ready, the problems will be over. There was Luke 13, from verse 11 to 17. Luke 13, from verse 11 to 17. The Bible talked about a woman bound by Satan for 18 years. But when God was ready, in an instant, the bondage came to an end. Like the story of the man by the pool of Bethesda that I referred to earlier on. He had been there for 38 years. Each time I read the story of this man, I try to imagine what this man must have gone through. Because at the beginning of the year, when everybody was saying Happy New Year, he was saying the same thing too. Thinking that year will be his year. Then one year passed. The second one. The third one, till the thirty-eighth year, but when God was ready, within a day, the problem of thirty-eight years came to an end. A good news for somebody. I don't know who you are, but I believe God has called this meeting for you. Yeah. That at long last, your deliverance will come. When it's ready, you might have even lost hope. But God is never late. If he says it's your time today, it is your time. Yeah, some of you will remember the story. Ah, before I tell you the story, let me say amen to this one. Because I believe this is for me. <laughs> God said, my plan for you is for you to excel. Yeah. And he asked me to tell you, you will yet excel. Yeah. Then I was going to tell you the story. We had a program, a program like this, and I was about to end, so I asked everybody to ask for something special. And there was this lady there who was already past childbearing age and had not married 
because nobody ever came. And so when we say, ask for anything special, she just said to God, I'm not, you know my problem. I've been praying to you about it for all these years. There's no answer. It's now too late. So I'm not going to bother you. I will just keep on praising you anyway. And God had that and remembered her. Few days later, one brother came and said, Sister, thus said the Lord, you are my wife. <laughs> she looked at him and said, You better go and pray again. Ah, afraid, you are the one. He, he, she looked at him and said, Don't you want children? Because I'm past childbearing age. The man said, Ah, glory be to God, you are the one. <laughs> because the man said, I already have children. I lost my wife. I don't need more children, but I need a wife. I need somebody who will keep me company, somebody who will help me look after the children the other woman left behind. You are the one. So they got married. Very month they got married, she became pregnant. When she delivered, she gave birth to a set of twins. Stand on your feet. Lift your voice to the Almighty God and say, Father, act for me today. <laughs> Just act, act, act for me, act for me, act for me, Lord. Speedily, act for me today. Act for me today. Oh, Lord God Almighty, act for me today. Act for me today. I know it may appear as if it's already late, but please act for me today. Let this be my set time. Let this be my set time. Let this be my set time, oh Lord. Act for me today. Almighty God, act for me today. Act speedily. Act for me today. Let this be my own set time. Act for me today. Act speedily. Act for me today. Thank you, Father. Act for me today. Act for me today. Please, Lord, act for me today. Act for me. Act for me. Let this be my set time. Act speedily. Act speedily. The problems of all these years put an end to them all. Act for me today. Act for me today. Act for me today. Ah, act for me today, Daddy. Please act for me today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Almighty God. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And so shall it be in Jesus' name. Please be seated as I conclude. When the fire fell, That day, suddenly, the ground where Moses was standing became holy. When the fire falls tonight, suddenly, revival will begin in Ireland.
Because wherever the fire touches becomes holy ground. This is a nation that used to send missionaries out. Revival will begin again. But that's for the nation. What about Moses himself? The one who saw the fire fall. The one for whom the fire fell. When he woke up that morning, he was a fugitive. He had been a fugitive running away from Pharaoh for 40 years. <laughs> Before he went to bed that night, he had become a terror to Pharaoh because the fire fell for him. Oh, several things happened to Moses within a period of less than one hour. He saw a miracle. He experienced a miracle. He touched a miracle. He carried a miracle with him when he was going. By the time you read Exodus chapter 4, verse 20. When the fire falls for a man, he becomes purified. He becomes someone who could be drawn close to God. He becomes someone that God could send on an errand. He becomes someone who could be an ambassador of the Most High God. If the fire of God falls for you today, this will be a night that you will never forget for the rest of your life. But may I appeal to you, because we still have one more prayer to pray. Before we ask the fire of God to fall, <laughs> make sure you are on his side. Because when the fire of God falls on a sinner, it consumes the sinner. Our God is a consuming fire. The day the fire fell on Mount Carmel, it promoted Elijah, brought revival to the land of Israel, but destroyed the prophets of Baal. God is a two-edged sword. One side of him is love, the other side of him is consuming fire. It depends on which side of him you are on. If you are not a child of God, and I'm not talking about going to church, I'm talking about genuinely saved, doing the will of God. If you are not a true child of God, don't ask the fire to fall. Because if the fire of God falls on a sinner, it consumes the sinner. But if you give your life to him and his blood washes away your sin, when his fire falls, it will be to purify you, it will be to empower you. And so the choice is yours. And remember, he knows you more than you even think. He knows when you are singing and dancing and your heart is far away from him. He knows that you can even be a preacher and yet be living in sin. He knows. There's nothing you can hide from him. And since he knows you anyway, why don't you come to him and say, please help me. I am living in sin. I want to be free. I want to be a true child of the living God. Save my soul. He will do so. 
He knows those who are backsliding. Who were once upon a time a true child of the living God, but now they have gone back to doing those things that they said they would never do again. He knows. But he says he's here to act. He's here to receive backsliders back to himself. He's here to save souls, to wash away sins, and then to baptize you with the Holy Spirit. That's why he's here. So if there's anyone here who will say, please, Pastor, join me in prayers. I want to be saved. I want my sins forgiven. I want to begin to live like a true child of the living God. Or I am backslidden, but I want to be restored to fellowship with the Almighty God. I'm going to count from one to seven. Before I say seven, if you want that prayer, come and stand before me. I will pray for you. He will forgive your sins. He will give you a brand new beginning. If by the time I say seven, you are not already standing before me, I know you are not coming, I will round up and we'll be on our way home. So if you want to give your life to Jesus, come now. If you are backsliding and you want to come back to the Almighty God, come now. The choice is yours. And you might be the only one fellow, so don't wait for anyone. I'm counting now. One. <laughs> Two. You can move forward. You can move forward. There are quite a lot of people coming. Those of you who are clapping, keep clapping. Your hand will never be empty. Keep clapping. Keep clapping. Let them move forward. Let them move forward. Thank you, Savior. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Savior, I just want to thank you. Thank you for your word. And thank you for these people who have decided to respond. You promise that whoever will come unto you, you will no wise cast out. They've come to you now, Father. Receive them in Jesus' name. Save their souls. Forgive their sins. Write their name in the book of life. Give them a new beginning. Anytime they call on you from now on, answer them by fire. Amen. And don't let them ever backslide. Amen. Please uphold them to the end. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. 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 Huh. Those of you who are in front, let me hear you shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> I rejoice with you. Because from now on, by the grace of God, I will be praying for you. Amen. And very soon you will begin to enjoy miracles Amen. that you have not even prayed for. Amen. Then you will know there's somebody somewhere praying for you. Amen. And that somebody will be me. Amen. Congratulations. In the mighty name of Jesus. All-sufficient God. The God who is more than enough. I join my faith with all these your children tonight. And I say, everything they have asked you for, please grant unto them. Long before December 24, grant all these their requests. That they may know that you are the helper of the helpless before December 24. Answer them all. And every piece of cloth lifted up to you now, saturate with your anointing. So that wherever each one is used, yokes will be destroyed. 
miracles will happen and your name will be glorified father accept the thanksgiving of your children use the offering for your glory and from now on father let your fire destroy poverty in their lives it shall be well with you wherever you go god will go with you everywhere you turn doors will open unto you god will defend you he will fight your battles for you he will draw you close to himself on your way there will be miracles at home miracles will be waiting for you from now on I will always hear good news concerning you it shall be well with you and you will serve God to the end so shall it be in Jesus mighty name we have prayed Amen. Shout a big hallelujah. Then lay the handkerchief on your own head and prophesy to yourself. And just say, Adeboye, it will be well with you. You will move from glory to glory, from power to power. You will never get tired. God will always show you favor. You will always find favor with men and favor with God. It shall be well with you. Go ahead, prophesy to yourself. 